Now, how are we doing now, folks? Can everybody hear me okay? Um, let me know. We've reset everything here. And um, <clears throat> I hope it's okay now. Uh, check, double checked everything. Everything is fine on this end. Um, <laughs> good man, Jamie. Yeah, maybe she has. Maybe she has. Well, Deirdre is normally... Uh, thanks, Alan. Uh, Deirdre, Jamie, is normally my tech girl. And if a problem like that would come, um, I'd normally be screaming for Deirdre to come and fix it for me. So she's not here at the moment. She's actually away in Clare. Um, <clears throat> okay, that's good. Seems to be... Um, Seems to be better now. Everyone seems to be uh, okay. Um, okay, so look, at, we'll push on. If any other problems there, sorry about this, folks. Sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes <sighs> technical things out of my control. Uh, the night that's in it. Um, okay, so tonight's all about your uh, your own infant. Um, or not, sorry, I'm a bit lost, I'm a bit muddled here now. Um, so tonight's all about upstream nymphing, okay? So, <clears throat> thanks, John. Thanks, Brian. <clears throat> so when we're talking about upstream nymphing, we're not just talking about your nymphing. Um, thanks, Liam. We're not just talking about your nymph, we're talking upstream nymphing. So this is casting nymphs upstream, okay? Now, there is... Thanks, John. There is... A lot of times when we're nymphing upstream that we don't necessarily want our nymphs on the bottom. Okay. Um, thanks, Mark. Uh, absolutely, John. Absolutely. Uh, could be, John. Could be. Uh, how you doing, Connor? I hope you're keeping well. <clears throat> so when we're talking about this kind of nymphing, we're not talking about our typical typical euro nymphing, driving nymphs down to the bed of the river and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we're talking more casting upstream. Now, say... Um, George McGrath is going to be on in a little while there, and he's going to give a very good demonstration on the River Shore about upstream nymphing. So tonight I wanted to... Um, great stuff, Garrett. Um, thanks a million for... Appreciate the business. Um, I wanted to tie some patterns that were going that are quite useful. Um, that are quite useful when we're upstream nymphing. So we got our, our fly rod, fly line, floating line. You got a tapered leader down to a sinking nymph, probably. Really good summertime fishing and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, Karen. Um, and you're, you're making a cast upstream. So these nymphs are not going to sink to the bottom. You're kind of keeping a contact to them. And you're, you know, you're waiting for the trout to take them. Almost like emergers and stuff like that, okay? So I'm going to get right into the fly time. And I can babble on as I go on. How you doing, Graeme Reggie Reynolds? How you doing, Kieran Flynn? John, everyone's on with us there again, I hope so. And uh, don't forget, folks, if you... Hit that share button, uh, you will be in the draw to win one of these. Um, great stuff, Kevin. Uh, thanks, Martin. Thanks, everyone, for letting me know. But you'll be in the draw to win these nymphs and a few I practiced on earlier on. So hit that share button or send a comment over there um, and say hi, and we will... Um, we, I'm in a bit of a muddle now. <laughs> After that, we, it's, it's always the worst nightmares when you're trying to go live and... Um, Things like that happen. So what I've got here in the vice is a 611 size 14 to hack a hook. And we have a 2.5 mil um, dark copper, Pascari Fly dark copper tungsten bead here. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Ricky. Um, <clears throat> a dark copper. How are you doing, Tony Rooney? Dave Donovan's going to be on there with another trivia quiz tonight, folks. We've got a lovely um, goodie bag there to give away tonight. So watch out for that one. Uh, it was micro -govern. It was a mad start. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway... So we got a 611 size 14 in the vice here. I got a 2.5 mil um, dark copper Pascari fly tungsten bead on there. And I'm going to put a little bit of micro glint in here. Just a small little bit of micro glint in here as a tail. Okay, so remember, we're not looking, we're not necessarily, like we want these flies to penetrate to a certain level. But I don't want them down as if I was Euro Nympha. So I just folded that over there. So I've just teased out, as you can see, I've teased out that little piece of uh, micro glint. That's the micro glint before you tease it out. And then when you just tease it out between your finger thumb, it becomes lovely. Hi, David. Um, becomes lovely and kind of broken up and, and very subtle little tail on this, this little nymph. So this is a little pheasant tail. But as I was just getting to there, I don't want these nymphs to be literally penetrating straight to the bottom. I want to stay them kind of in the mid mid table of the of the water um, and looking for those fish that are looking up. Sometimes and an awful, you know, a, a regular thing that can occur when you're an infant or focusing on your infant is that you're an infant under the trout. Your nymphs are actually under the trout. If they're looking up or up in that mid table of, of the water, mid, middle body of the water, um, you know, your nymphs are actually underneath them. And you, you can, you know, you can go a period of time without catching fish and not realize, oh, maybe it's the wrong nymph, the wrong area, whatever it may be. But actually, sometimes the trout are actually looking up. So 
this kind of more of a technique of upstream nymphing um, can be can be super effective at times like that. I've got a little bit of fine copper wire going in here. And these three little patterns that I'm going to tell you tonight are tried and tested over the years and are really, really successful at this method. So when we're looking at the profile of a nymph, um, say Euro nymph, and I'm always talking about, the, you know, getting a large tungsten bead in there, getting the profiles real, you know, aerodynamic and stuff like that, get penetration, get that nymph to the bottom as quick as possible. For these style of patterns, it's not the case, okay? We're, we're going to have a little bit more restriction here. So on a lot of those European nymphs, I'm not tying in hackles and things like that and uh, materials that will slow down the penetration we're always looking for that sleek look um of our flies and stuff uh, where these kind of flies it, um we're looking for a little bit uh we don't need to be as 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 uh concerned about the, the um the profiles and restrictions of, of getting the nymph down. I've got a nice little bit of dark pheasant tail on here now and I only put in three three single strands that's all I want um off that pheasant tail and I'm going to wind it up the body of the fly as you can see nice little pheasant tail very simple very natural little nymph we really are looking to imitate those natural emergers um, tie it off there I'll snip that away so I was speaking earlier on just going back on some of the points I made earlier on that just could next I'm going to rib this up now with this copper wire um, Great feedback from the technical show last weekend. Uh, everyone seemed to really enjoy it. Um, and uh, definitely something we're going to do a little bit more of going forward is, is kind of technical stuff as well. You know, we get a lot of requests for different things. Um, and sometimes maybe it's just structuring one complete show into a whole technical aspect of flight time um, can, can, can be beneficial to those people looking for it. So we'll have a look at more technical stuff going forward. But for the month of November, we got Nymph in November, got some great shows lined up, got some great special guests coming on the show over the next couple of um over the next couple of, of weeks. So do stay tuned in. We're here live every Saturday night. Hi to all our YouTubers. Um hi to all our YouTubers and don't forget if you share the stream or comment on it. How you doing Aiden Gill? Um You'll be in a draw to win these flies. Congratulations to uh, James O'Connor who won the prize last week for the show. So now what I'm going to tie in is a little bit of a thorax cover here and it's pheasant tail. Okay. Now what I normally do to get the length of these right because I want to fold these legs back onto this fly and create little just legs on either side using the tips of the pheasant tail. Okay. And there's always how, how long do I give it? How short do I make it? For me it's always the length of the body. Okay. So the length of the body and then move it back to where your tying thread is. Okay. I'm always going the length of the body. Of the fly and I'll secure them in there like so snip that away now also I'm going to put a few little partridge hackles in there so what I'm going to do is take my partridge how are you doing Jason Reardon I'm going to take my little partridge hackle as you can see and just pinch it there on the very tip and just stroke them back gently. It's a small piece of partridge now, so you gotta do this quite carefully. Okay, till you got all those feathers kind of just push brush back. And I'm gonna tie that in there as well. So that means when I pull all that forward, those hackles are gonna just uh, shoot back at a nice angle on the on, on, on that nymph. Okay. We're gonna then gonna take a little bit of um Hen Spectre Dubbin, number 46. I'm still in a bit of muddled after all that. My whole trail of thought, the whole thing lined up and, and how we're going to intro, introduce our Nymph in November segments and stuff to you. Uh, I, I'll catch up with myself. George will be on in a little while there now and he'll give me a few moments. George McGrath is going to be on with us there now, folks. Uh, an absolute expert at this upstream nymph and he does a very good descriptive video for us there on the river shore about upstream nymph and the... the, the um, The technique so make sure you stay tuned and watch that and i said dave will be on there hi hugh uh dave will be on there with his trivia quiz there in a little moment and uh don't forget to hit that share button so just adding another little bit of peacock dubbing here for my thorax always making sure that partridge is stroked back out of the way nice simple little nymph not too flash very natural you know not overdressed just nice and simple um <laughs> thanks Dennis nice and simple uh, I do always get in a fluster when things like that happen uh, nice and it hasn't happened in ages I've been I was only thinking before the show started god I haven't um, gone on and start talking away without hitting the no sound button for ages I used to be 
a divil at it. Like, be talking away there. Next thing, all the messages will come in. Because there's quite a delay here. I got, you know, a large screen TV going to my right here. I got the computer here on my left. Uh, trying to tie flies. Trying to watch the comments. Trying to do the producing. Um, and sometimes I forget to hit a button. And I used to be quite good at not hitting the sound button. And for the last while, I think I was just thinking to myself, just before the show. Um, Jesus, it's been ages since... Um, how you doing, Graham? Um, thanks, John. Uh, but um, it's been ages since I haven't hit that sound button, as you all remember from this one. So I've just tied them in over the back like so. And now I'm going to catch my cock pheasants, and I'm going to pull that up through the middle as a thorax cover. Just making sure I get a fairly equal amount of partridge on either side for a moment. Just take your time with that one. A lovely little nymph. Very, very effective. I remember one year fishing a gnaw up around Doro when I was living in Kilkenny City with this style of a nymph casting upstream exactly as we do for upstream nymphing. And uh, the success rate was just unbelievable. Um, so I'm going to tie them over. So you have two options here at this particular point. I can fold those pheasant tails back along if I want or I can trim them off nice and neat. Um... How are you doing, Norman? I can trim them off nice and neat. It depends on the finish of the fly I want. Okay, with those little partridge legs, I can trim them off. Or I will trim them off, should I say. Nice and neat. Or you can fold them back. So if you wish to fold them back, well then probably don't put in the partridge. Okay? Either or will, will, will suffice as legs for the little fly. Uh, a little nymph. It just gives it a very natural looking little... Um, Makes it a very natural looking little nymph. Going to take another little bit of peacock dubbing there now. Small, small little pinch. So you can see I'm not adding in any hot spots. I'm not doing any kind of mad over tying on this fly. We're keeping it nice and natural. Very simple little natural nymph. Uh, how you doing Jack Cantwell? Great to have everyone back on with us here. Nice, simple, natural little nymph. Super effective. Again, I'm going to cast that upstream. I'm going to have that on a tapered leader. I'm going to have that on a tapered leader. I'm not going to have an indicator section on. For all want of a description, it's a dry fly leader. Uh, casting it upstream at, at, at a distance away from me. And once it enters the water and gets to kind of where I want to be, I'm not going to drag it back out of water, but I'm going to do my best to attain contact. Contact is crucial here to see the takes. Um, you want to get a little bit of contact with that nymph. So if a trout sucks it in, you know, that you have some indication on the tip of the fly line or maybe your high colored, um, your high colored, you'll hear George talking about that, your high colored uh, tapered leader. That you'll get some indication that has trout has touched it, any unnatural movement to tip of that fly line, and then you'll obviously set your hook. Okay, so it, it takes a bit of technique there to get used to it. Um, <laughs> it takes you a bit of technique to get to that kind of style of fishing, but it's super effective. And this is for, we'll say, upstream nymphon when trout are looking up a little bit, but not necessarily down on the bottom where we want them for your own nymphon. Um, you know, you can go to wet fly, you can go to dry fly, and, and possibly target those fish. But upstream nymphon can be super effective in, in pocket water and stuff like that. And there's a lovely, simple little pattern, nothing overdressed, nothing too flashy, just nice and simple. Thanks, James. Uh, nice and simple there. And it's going to get you through all day long if they're in that position. Especially during, say, I really like fishing that kind of way. Um, you know, a couple of times a year that would really, like, when when there's good fly hatches on and trout are kind of off the bottom and up moving around a bit, little nymphs like that can be, you know, really, really super effective fished in the manner of upstream nymph. And, and say, George is going to go a bit more into the whole technique of that there now shortly. That's going up into the tub there now. So just before we get to George, though, we are going to do another quick little, thanks, Alan, we are going to do another quick little nymph. And it's nice to tie nymphs that are, well, it's not really more realistic, but, you know, they're not the same as kind of our European nymphs. Okay, the stuff we use for your own nymph and those big. We're going to get to those over the next couple of weeks. Uh, good man, Tony. We're going to get, thanks, Graham. We're going to get to that kind of nymph over the next couple of weeks. We really do have a great nymph in November lined up for this year. I'm probably going to do one of my favourite shows. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I've been looking forward to this one all year. Um, and we're going to do a show maybe next weekend. If I can have it myself organised for next weekend, it could be coming up next weekend. So stay tuned out. It's the one I'm really, really looking forward to do um, since I've decided I'm going to do a show on this particular thing. But um, So that one's coming up. Um, 
that one's coming up. Kevin, you could be on the wrong stream. You want to be on Pascari Fly, or you want to hit the live button on the side of your yoke, and you will see other people's comments. Um, all the comments are coming in here. Um, so here I'm going to put in device is a size 301, sorry, a size 14 301 to hack with uh, Barbara's hook. I'm just going to select my bead here now. Yeah, Ken, it is nice, simple pattern. You know, when I'm doing this kind of upstream infant um, stuff, I'm not complicating things. We're looking to keep it. We are more imitative towards our fly patterns. And when when I'm European infant, I'm really, you know, targeting that aggressive nature in the trout, um, focusing on that an awful lot more. We, we will go into that in more detail. I know a few people have asked me about setups and stuff like that. How you doing, Peter McCartan? A lot of people have asked me about setups and things like that. Um, and we will get to those throughout the month of November. Um, but for now, it's, it's just upstream nymph. And I will talk more about setups and chest packs. And we'll go through some of that stuff. I know we've done it before. But we will incorporate some of that into our um, nymph in November. Um, so, just a bit of Kevlar tread on there. A 2.5mm silver bead. Going to put in a little cocktail on tail here. Nice, simple little nymph again. And this one really is, is that time when trout are starting in the springtime coming into the warmer days you know you're starting to get hatches of iron blues there's olives hatching around the place and this is a real fish catcher um lovely little nymph robbie berry's on with us there robbie great feedback there from robbie's segment last week don't forget robbie's going to be on with us and uh, numerous times over the winter months we have a long winter to go yet yeah, folks we're only starting into november i have a little bit of uh hens holographic red here just tying that in, and I'm going to just tie a little tiny tag at the bottom of that fly. But uh, Robbie's going to be on there. Great segment from Robbie last week. Great feedback. Everyone really enjoyed. He's he's um, sharing his knowledge in, in feather care and feather harvesting. Robbie's made us a load of series of videos there. Fantastic stuff um, that we're going to be sharing, which is all throughout the, throughout the season. So do make sure and uh, <clears throat> stay tuned for Robbie. Now for a rib for this, I need a little bit of fine silver wire. A little bit of Sabaya, fine silver wire. This is 0 0.1. And we're going to tie that. Now we're going to add in a little bit of grey heron, okay? This is a grey heron secondary feather, not the primary. The primary can be very dark and a bit stiff for a pattern like this. Now, the secondary feather is what I tend to use for my dry flies, okay? Now, because the, the, the heron is a natural a bird that lives on water and stuff like that, you know, there is natural oils in there in that feather that will, um, that will help keep a fly off the bottom float a bit will restrict its, its its penetration down to the to the bed of the river so um you know it does assist us in keeping the fly into where we want it in that kind of mid table but this is the, a much softer feather as you can see if I, I don't have a primary there actually i do hang on there one second folks now i got one here beside me the joys of so this is the primary off the wing you can see how dark that is you can see how quite stiff that is there you know very stiff and when i'm if i'm tying nymphs say for european nymph and i will do that uh, absolutely jamie we are going to be doing a grayland night this year and um, we're actually going to be heading to wales in in november and following that we're going to be doing a grayland night. so we're going to have some footage of grayland we're going to be trying some of our top grayland patterns and stuff like that so um <laughs> the good man dave uh so definitely stay tuned for a grayland night there will be a grayland night coming up so you can see how dark that primary is there off the wing and then in comparison to the secondary okay and that's the feather we're going to use for tying this particular fly if i was tying dries with heron that is the feather i would use okay quite long a uh, lovely piece of material to work with very soft and a beautiful color too um so i'm just going to strip off a little bit of that there's about four or five kind of um pieces there on that and it's going to wind it up the hook so as you can kind of guess now this is a little heron nymph Great when the iron blues are around. Very good for olives as well. Heron is a really good colour during the olive season. I do dye it olive as well. Um, can be really effective. Uh, it's a lovely soft material. I remember a Polish guy one time when I was over on the Sand River in Poland fishing. And a, one of our guides that was guiding us at the time. We were walking down the riverbank and he found a, um, a heron heron feather on the ground and he you know he picked it up and he showed me a piece of best feather much better the pheasant tail he reckoned he would get the heron feathers and he would dye them brown and use those for his pheasant tail limbs because it said it's much softer and when the trout feel it it feels far more natural in their mouth and um, they don't tend to spit it out quite as quick so he was always tying all his pheasant tails he would dye them brown and stuff like that um he was tying all his pheasant tails with um 
with actual heron dyed brown. So I got a little bit of muskrat fur here, small little bit of muskrat fur, and we're just gonna put a small little pinch that in behind the bead. Again, these nymphs, you know, there's great simplicity in these nymphs. You don't have to get over complicated with them. Um, you need to remember where we where we need them to fish. And then the technique is, is probably more important than most things, okay? The technique of being able to detect the take, being able to keep that contact without, you know, with a natural drift and not creating drag. Now, I'm going to hackle up a little bit of CDC on this as well here. So, again, you know, it's going to sustain, um, we are, Peter, we are. It's going to sustain the nymph in its... Um, in the position that we actually want it in, okay? So I'm gonna hackle up. Now there's two ways to hackle up, excuse me, CDC. We will somewhere along the way be doing a CDC night, and we have a long way to go till March, so we, we at some stage we're going to be doing a CDC night, and we're going to be doing a Cocktail Leon night as well, folks. And uh, Got a really good show, working on a really good show for Cocktail Leon only. Um, but so there's two ways that I would hackle up a CDC feather on a nymph. One is I take it off on a magic tool, split the thread, put it in, spin it, and wind it on. But I find that can be very dense up near the bead, okay? The second way we're going to do it is we're actually just going to wind it on like a hackle, very similar to what I do with the partridge. I'm going to pinch it up there to hit. And I'm going to stroke back those feathers. Be careful not to strip anything. And I'm going to put that in there just between that bit of dubbin and the bead. Like so. Okay. Taking away my waist. So as I said, when I hackle up, if I do a dubbin loop, um, it can be, I can find it can be a bit dense up around the, the, um, it can be a bit dense up around the head of a fly and it can be a bit overpowering. Where if we do it just with this, we can get just a nice quantity of single hackles going back. I don't want it again overpower the fly with CDC. I just want a little subtle texture of CDC to it as you can see. You can all get that there now. Nice subtle hackle of CDC over that. Couple of turns at the back of the back of the nymph. And again I'm not adding in a hot spot. Okay, there's a temptation there and I do have the, I do have the Tommy fly um there beside me. There is a temptation there to put a hot collar on that. Um but it's far more effective as a natural nymph fished in the, in the position we wanted upstream nymphing. Um, just like so. Okay. Give it a little bit of a brush out. And that is a beautiful nymph. Now that nymph fished upstream is absolutely fantastic. Also what's really good for that nymph, sometimes you put on actually floating on that nymph, the powder. Okay, put the powder on that nymph and it'll make it float. <clears throat> not sink well it'll definitely break the surface with that little bead but it won't it won't um penetrate quite as well but the, the look you get off and now i'm just looking for something here for a second because i just want to show you something i'm going to wet this fly i actually have a little tub of water beside me today because it's important to see our fly is wet so i'm just going to put a little bit of tippet on that there now for a second i just have a little piece of water here and i'm going to show you how these flies will actually it's quite dark here so bear me a second there now i'll try and get that oh my gosh There we go. Just going to tie a little blood knot on that there now. Thanks, Kiran. Yes, absolutely. John John's there. It's to catch bubbles and to make legs. A bit of both. Um, <clears throat> hi, Tomas. Um, thanks, Colm. Uh, it's to catch bubbles and have a little bit of legs. It's also have that softness and that movement. But you're going to see, when I, when I wet it there now in a second, you're going to see how soft this nymph is going to look. And um, Because that CDC is going to come back over and cloak that flight. I'm always mice in our nap before we tighten it. Um, thanks, Mikey. Uh, really is an, a, an absolute lovely. So there we can see it nice and nice and dry. Okay, our hackles are, are, are out there. Um, going to just moisten it up there now. And what you'll see then in a second is kind of when that looks wet and how it will. Now, look at that. You see how that CDC, look at our rib coming through. Look at our hot spot underneath. You see how our, our CDC has cloaked that fly? Beautiful, soft looking nymph. So natural. That thing coming down in mid rift trout are not going to pass it by. I'm trying to get the best picture I can there for you folks. Wait till I get my tweezers and I might help steady it and get my big old hands out there. Um, but you can see that when it's wet. Now that CDC comes back over and cloaks it. But you can also see what I mean. Why, why I don't want to overpower the CDC on the top of the flight. Because the rib won't come through. The colour of the heron won't come through. And that lovely red um, holographic butt won't be as predominant as you can see it there now. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Graeme. Um, really, really effective fly for exactly that purpose 
of upstream nymph and very natural very soft in the trout's mouth uh, if they go to suck that in it just you know it can buy you that extra moment before they, they realize it's it's actually not a real nymph and uh, spit it out beautiful simple pattern you know so effective and really really one want, want to, to have for upstream nymphing so just to have a bit more of a look and kind of a more detailed uh, our master mr george mcgrath kindly went on to the shore for us during the summer george great supporter of the show here uh yeah absolutely ken it's amazing when you just wet it <laughs> thanks john thanks jonas but it's amazing when you're wetting nymph like that and you know it's important to get a good visual aspect of what the truck are going to see you know and it's a good understanding of how we use materials the likes of that cloaking as well that we don't over cloak it only needs that subtle cloaking in order to achieve that because you still want that rib coming through the the um the red holographic coming through and um, <clears throat> you're going to see that now in a minute ricky i'm going to leave that up to george to give a good demonstration here on the river shore say george a fantastic flight there and a fantastic fly fisherman on the river shore down there in clamel and he kindly went on and made us a video about upstream nymph and he's he's a genius at it and very effective angler and um thanks bernard really effective angler and uh, he kindly went on and did a, sh uh, a a video for us i'm going to try and make sure not click something that i shouldn't be clicking here now folks um kindly went down and made a video for us about upstream nymph and so i'm going to leave you in the trusted hands here of george mcgrath i'm going to be back we still have other patterns to do dave is going to be on <coughs> dave is going to be on shortly with uh trivia as well don't forget to watch out that we got a really nice lucky bag for everyone there tonight a bag full of goodies there to give away um dave will be on with his questionnaire in a while and i'm going to hand this over to george mcgrath now and see us back here in a few moments for more uh, nymphs that are really really effective in this in this um technique of fly fishing so uh enjoy this now folks and i'll see you all in a few moments hopefully i won't press the wrong button and we'll be back as normal <laughs> Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. Um, many thanks to Peter Driver for asking me to contribute to his, what can only be described as a welcome relief throughout the winter to be able to see people tying flies and talking about fly fishing. So well done to Peter for um, having the, the patience and all the rest of it to um, continue again for another season, or should I say during the closed season. So. Um, Thanks Peter for asking me to contribute and in this video I'm going to um, give you all just a quick sort of a run through on my favourite nymphing technique. Now you're all fully aware of course and most of you know how to Euro nymph and there's French nymphing and Czech nymphing, Polish nymphing and all these a whole variety of different nymphing techniques and all of them without exception are derived from my favorite method which is the upstream nymph and I suppose in one sense it's the simplest form and that's why I suppose it began as the simplest form and all these other methods have developed from it and I fish this nymphing, te nymphing technique um, virtually all the time occasionally I euro nymph it's a uh, it's fine at times and um, it's very effective no question about it but I just get more enjoyment from fishing just the upstream nymph so what I'm going to do I'm just going to quickly run you through on how I set up for nymphing for the upstream nymphing technique and then what I'll do is I'll go to the river and uh, show you what I do there so um, I'm going to start off first of all the rod I'm going to use is this little syndicate rod it's a nine foot three weight which by the way it came by way of Peter Driver's um, business Piscari Fly and it's a beautiful little rod it's just a nine foot it's virtually weightless and um, nine foot three weight and uh, that's my favorite for all types of fishing and for the upstream nymph it's perfect and uh, I love it for dry fly also so basically that's the rod I'll be using and the reel I have here is it happens to be a sage click reel which is again very very light and that coupled with the rod makes for a very very light kit indeed and um, that helps of course um, if you're fishing for say a protracted period of time the fact that it's lighter and it's so light um, you don't get as tired as quickly so how I set it up for upstream nymph and again it's the simplest form of nymph and so it's a very very simple setup it helps if your fly line, in this case this is a double taper 
three weight line now it helps if your fly line is a high vis color such as this one is this is a sort of a high vis yellow and that helps and aids in um, detecting takes and to that I just have attached a 12 foot tapered leader that's it now this leader happens to be partly high vis as well so about for about six feet I would say it's a sort of a high-vis yellow again. These are made by Varivas, V-A-R-I-V-A-S, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And they are also available from Peter's Piscari Fly. And I find them very good for this style of nymphing. So that's it, folks. It's that simple. You have your rod, your reel, and basically a high-vis line if you have it. It is not absolutely necessary. If your eyesight's very good, it won't be necessary at all. But this aids in... Um, definitely with the take detection and of course the tapered leader so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head for the river and I'm going to show you how I set all this up how I put it together and uh, show you the flies that I'll be using etc so be with you in a second see you on the bank right okay lads here at the bank of the river now and uh, I've put the rail on the rod the line is up through the rings and we're almost ready to go simply a matter now of just tying on a fly and I'm gonna to go to my default nymph which basically is a pheasant tail gold bead pheasant tail in a size 14 works every place so I'm gonna tie that on and then I'm gonna do what is probably the most important thing to do and that is to grease the front of the fly line and about six feet of the leader closest to the fly line so there's many portions around um, different types of floatings and line floating etc mucilin and few other varieties and basically what I'm doing now I'm using my right hand to apply floatant to about six feet of the leader closest to the fly line and then about five or six feet of the front of the fly line as well this is very very important and then I use my left hand to pick up the fly and I avoid touching the front part of the leader with my right hand. I don't want any floatant on the four to five feet nearest the fly because I want that to sink quickly. But it's imperative that the fly line floats high and as much of the leader as possible. So that's it. We're ready to go. It's uh, to say it's a simple form of nymph fishing is something of an understatement. Very, very basic setup, but it works. Someone welcome visitors cormorants so I'm going to throw a few casts around here just to demonstrate the technique whether I catch any fish or not remains to be seen but um, it's mid-September bright sunshine northerly airflow so it's not really conducive to fish activity there may not be any fish activity at all but just going to throw a few casts so you can see how I fish this actual technique Now, ha, we got a small fish. Now take detection. How did I detect the take? Well, this is probably the most difficult part to learn of this very simple technique. Um, basically, you need to peel your eyes to the front of the fly line and the floating part of the leader assuming you can see it and any twitch stop or hesitation on the fly line you react immediately 
Oftentimes when I'm teaching beginners this uh, simple technique, they tend to hesitate when the line stops or something. And I, I, I ask them why and they say, well, it might just be a rock or it might be a weed. And that may well be the case, but you need to respond every single time to anything that is a visual indicator or even sometimes you'll get a sense that uh, something's happening and strike and there'll be a fish there. The most important thing is line control. I'll explain it this way, it's the best way to explain it. You need to be in touch with the nymph without pulling on it. And it's important that you don't allow any slack line either. Because if you allow any slack line, if you see an indication and strike, you'll inevitably be too late. So you need to be in contact with the nymph all the way through the drift in order to get um, a good hook set on any possible takers. As fortune would have it, folks, believe it or not, I'm after running into these three boys here on the river. And one of them has actually volunteered to um, get in the river with me here and he's going to learn, or I'm, at least I'm going to give him a little lesson on upstream nymphing. Your name again? Sean Dowling. Sean Dowling is his name. I don't know where he's from or if he's any good at fishing or anything, I, I don't know. But any, in any case, he's going to try and learn upstream nymphing. So we're going to hop into the river here together and I'm going to give him a little bit of coaching. So be sure to stay with us. Now, I'm just going to give Sean a quick demonstration here of upstream nymphing. Like I said, it's not rocket science. It's very simple. Here we are, Sean. All I'm doing is casting up into the water like that yeah. and I'm peeling my eyes onto the front of the fly line and any part of the leader I can see floating. Okay. Right? And if it hesitates, stops, or does anything that you deem out of the ordinary, strike immediately. Okay? Yeah. So now I, under, I know that obviously you're not used to this. This is my own little nine foot rod and you're probably going to take you a few minutes for you to adjust to it. But in any case, off you go. If you want to go over here a bit and just do what I'm doing basically. And you want to get as straight a line as you possibly can. And keep in touch with it and just watch the front of the fly line. Good. You can see that you're used to the Euro nymphing because you're trying to lob it, right? Yeah. So if you cast it more like a dry fly, that's it. That's better. Now, if you bring your rod around like that, bring your rod around, make sure you stay in front of the nymph, like Euro nymphing in a sense. Yeah. If you try and keep it straighter, if you know what I'm saying, you're casting at very much an angle. If you try and keep it as straight as you can, that gives you a better drift, if you like. Yeah, I get so. That's it. You move across another bit. We move, you cover a lot of water very quickly with this technique. I say, peel your eyes to it now, Sean. And if there you go, did you see it? Yeah. Fish on. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Show him to the camera. Fish of the day. <laughs> Success on the upstream nymph. Well done, Sean. It's actually a salmon fry. Yeah. And that usually doesn't bode well for fishing because when you're catching these, generally the trout are not very active. So go on, pull away there. If you just pull out the line. Now off you go again. But you did see the take. I did, yeah. Was it obvious? Ah, uh, yeah. I see the tip of the fly line. Just yeah, out. that's all you need. The Tipperary men are always showing the Kilkenny men what to do with the hurling and everything, aren't we? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> now we should get a fish along here. This is prime water. Getting used to the rod, Sean? Yeah. Getting the feel of it? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's a nice little rod. Lovely little rod for this job. And for dry fly as well, actually. They're just, there you go, you're a little slow, you need to be, it may not have been a fish, I'm just saying that you need to be just a little bit quicker. Quite fast, yeah. yeah, you need to be as fast as chain lightning because when you actually see the indication, the fish will be in the process of spitting it out, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So you need to be ultra fast. They won't get, they won't uh, give you much of a chance. Good. You see it again? Just barely. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. It, no. yeah. Now, there may not have been fish at all. It could be a stone, it could be a weed, but you need to respond every time. Now, Sean, I have to ask you is it a technique that you would 
use in the future? Or would you prefer, obviously you're, you, you're an nymph and you dry dropper and all that already. Would you, I know you haven't seen much success right here, right yeah. now, but like given what you've seen, would you bear it in mind for the future? Is it a technique you might use? In, in oh yeah, definitely. It's something, you know, something else to have as long, yeah. along with nymph and, you know, you're yeah. a nymph and dry dropper. It's another you string know, for your bow, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if there's ever yeah. a day that, yeah. you know, other things are not working, yeah. Dry dropper wouldn't be working like this, yeah. you know, it could be worth a shout. Like. Absolutely, yeah. And it's very easy to learn, isn't it? Oh, once, yeah. once you have yeah. once you have the basics. If you're able to fly cast at all, yeah, yeah it's you'll, relatively easy, isn't it? Yeah, you'll start getting the hang yeah. of it, yeah. yeah. See, just see near, near them bulrushes there, just between us and the bulrushes, if you can throw a cast just there. Yeah. Good. That's a, a likely looking spot. They combine and dry fly fishing and nymphing. It is, it is, it is exactly, yeah. And today isn't a great example of how effective it actually is, but on its day it can be super effective. So that's it, Sean. Good man. Appreciate you giving it the, the go and... Um, no problem at all, George. Thanks a lot. So there you are, lads. Probably it's a uh, no bother. Uh, there you are, lads. He's uh, just ten minutes across here, and he now has, we'll call, upstream nymphin under his belt, so to speak. So um, thanks once again, Sean. Yeah, Good man. Thanks for no time. bother. That was one other advantage that I didn't mention, and that is the fact that. You just have your leader and one fly means that you can nip off your nymph and put on a dry fly in the event that you spot a fish rising. So in an instant you can go from nymph fishing to dry fly fishing or even a wet fly. Now that's something that you can't do if you're euro nymphing because you have quite an elaborate setup for euro nymphing which would take time to change. So that's the upstream nymph lads. It's not rocket science. It's a skill like any other fly, fly fishing skill. It takes a while to learn and to get good at it. The more you practice obviously, the better you'll be at it. So um, I hope this made sense to you. It's an abbreviated version if you like. If you want to see a more, um, a longer version of what I've done and uh, more information, if you check out my YouTube channel, Gundog and Fly, I have quite a few videos on upstream nymphing. So, once again, thanks for watching, lads, and uh, thanks again to Peter for asking me to contribute. Slog of all. There we have George McGrath, folks, uh, on with us there from the River Short. Huge thanks to George for contributing to the show once again. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I've managed to get my trail of thought back together after that start. But a uh, huge thanks to George McGrath for showing off his uh, skills there and sharing his knowledge. As always, George is a great contributor to the show. Um, and it, as we always say here, folks, you know, this is a community of us fly players and fly fishers. And if anybody out there wants to share content uh, with the group, you're more than welcome to send us over. Get in touch with uh, us here at Piscari Fly and we can uh, <clears throat> put your content up on the show. Um we love having people contributing. It's, it's great to get um, people the likes of the, the skill level, the likes of George, coming on here and, and sharing his information. Um, so we're going to move on to our next pattern here. Just before we do, just want to wish the wife a happy birthday. It was her birthday yesterday. Uh, Deirdre there, she's over in Clare at the moment. Uh, happy birthday, Dee. Thanks for all your patience. <laughs> she has a lot of patience, uh, folks, especially when you're married to someone like me. But... Um, she gives up her Saturday night, every Saturday night to while well, we're doing these shows and stuff like that. So fair play to her. She's also a big part of the, the Piscari Fly. She does a lot of the technical work, a lot of the packaging your orders and stuff like that. So thanks a million, uh, honey, for everything. Um, <clears throat> um, 
just reading back to some comments there. Yes, a 12 foot leader, uh, Martin. A 12 foot leader is what he's using. That's a Vavaris high vis yellow uh, tapered leader. Uh, he was using there. Uh, we haven't, I think, I'm not sure if we have him in stock at the moment. Um, but it was a 12 foot tapered leader he was using. Um, right, so we're going to move on to another pattern here now, folks. Again, another curved hook, 611. Um, this time a size 16 is in the vice. And I got a 2 mil countersunk slotted bead on there. Um... He does absolutely, Kenneth. Um, I'm not sure. You can check out. Um, I, <laughs> yes, Dave. I am. Uh, you can check out George's uh, YouTube channel there, folks. He's got a YouTube channel. I think Rod Dog and Gun is the is the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, fantastic YouTube channel there with endless amount of information on it. Um, I'm just going to add on a bit of Kevlar thread here first, and as you can see, I'm adding it on above the bead the bead is sitting back at the at the hook there for a moment and that's exactly what i want to achieve okay for a moment so i'll just add a little base layer of kevlar thread on there for a second um thanks a million glenn um yeah it's great to have the people like sir george coming on contributing we got loads of people contributing as usual uh, on our live shows every week we got the likes of uh, robbie berry there with his his feather care and feather harvesting we got peter um, wadding on there with his fly tying and stuff like that and lots of other people coming on to the show over the next couple of months so do stay tuned we're live here every saturday night folks at 8 30 p.m a little drop of Hold me breath there now for a moment. I don't want to overdo this, which I nearly did. A little drop of zap a gap onto that hook, okay? And we're going to move our bead up into position. And that is going to. I'm just going to get out a little needle there now for a second and just clean that up. I've got one here somewhere. <clears throat> a little brush will do. Just, there we go, perfect. Okay, so I've, I've just, um, gun dog and fly, thanks John. Uh, Dave Donovan's on there folks, question has come up. So basically what I've done is I've just managed to set that bead back away from the eye hook. Okay, very important process. I put down the little base of thread there to help the, the, the glue set and just mount that bead exactly where I wanted it, just a little bit away from the, the eye hook. Okay, um, so once that's set, nice and solid, you can then proceed on to start building our fly. This is probably my number one pattern for this style of fly fishing. Um, back to our Kevlar and add it in back onto the shank of our hook. Now for our rib for this one, we're using a bit of um, buzzer body from Hens. This is black buzzer body from Hens. And we're going to add that in there for a little rib. Don't forget, folks, if you ever look for any fly tie and fly fishing equipment, give us a show here at pescarifly.com. We're always willing to give you the best advice possible we have. So this stream will be up on YouTube tomorrow. Hi to all our YouTubers. Um, will be up there tomorrow. <clears throat> now we're going with just some Pescari Fly Rabbit Dubbin. This is a uh, olive rainbow, okay? So it's an olive, or it's an olive hare's ear, an olive rabbit, sorry, an olive rabbit dubbing with a little bit of rainbow Salmo Supreme from Sabaya mixed through it. So it's a very subtle little shimmer on this one. Okay, tease out a small bit, in against the back of the trade, and just wind it under, nice and tight. Rabbit always goes in nice and tight, the fly in exactly the way we want it. And just start building your body slowly up along that hook. Must be a long question, Dave, if you're taking this long to text that I'm looking at here, thinking, uh, <clears throat> Looking to see the question come up. I don't know what Dave is actually asking tonight. He said he had it sorted. I'm going to make sure now I'm not missing it. Dave Donovan here is on. So according to my eight-year-old nephew, what is the only fish species that the male gets pregnant and gives birth to its young? Third answer, third answer is correct. Is going to win that um, nice prize there of that lucky bag. And while these are all thrown on the answers there, 
<coughs> Mikey Foley's on there with a horsefish. Wiley, as they're all throwing up your answers, don't forget the third correct answer wins. Okay? David, let me know who wins that. Um, <laughs> Ricky Nemo. I don't know, Ricky, if Nemo counts. But uh, I'm going to rib up this little olive body now with the black hens buzzer body. As you can see, it gives us a lovely, dark, little, fantastic little olive nymph, this one. Um, and say my number one fly for fishing, this style of fishing. Works from March right through till September. Very simple little pattern, but very, very effective. Whip finish that off. In there behind that bead. <coughs> And then what you want is a little dubbing brush there, just to brush out that nice soft rabbit. Give that body a lovely soft look to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So once I've done that, I'll then take my Kevlar thread. I'll just straighten up the eye that hook and make it life a little bit easier for myself. I'll take my Kevlar thread and add it into that section. There's about two mil there. Between two to three mil between the, the, the bead and the actual eye of the hook. Okay? So what I'm gonna do now is take a little piece of white CDC, little white CDC feather here, and I'm gonna take a pinch of that off. Yano! Yano is our winner. Congratulations, Yano. We'll be in touch with you tomorrow to get your prize over there. Nice lucky bag there, gift bag from Biscari Flight. Uh, lots of cool products in there and bits and pieces for you to have a bit of fun with. <clears throat> little pinch of white CDC. Again, very subtle. Just teasing it out. And it's going to tie that back in there over the fly. We can shorten it up in a little moment if we need to do so. Make sure it's sitting on top of the fly. Catch your waist. And take away the waist. go <clears throat> now we're going to take a little partridge feather yeah John absolutely one of the holy grail patterns uh, and I'm just a small little partridge feather as you can see and we're going to tie that in there as well We're just going to catch the very tip of that partridge feather. Just making sure it's separated away from the CDC. Very brittle now, folks. So don't be surprised if it snaps here. That's just part of the flight time process. Add no great pressure to that feather. And there you go. That's okay. It shows that we are live. These things do happen to everybody including the start that we had on this show when our feed wasn't working quite well. Get your thread in there to secure it. It's a simple pluck away to get away the waste. And then we're going to stroke that partridge feather back over that bead. So basically we've got the, the weight effect of the bead, but we're, we're cloaking that bead, we're really hiding that bead as well. Um, very little natural olive pattern. Absolutely lethal in the technique that George just showed you um, <clears throat> absolutely John yeah that happens when you're working with small stuff like that a tiny little pinch of that olive rabbit again and we add that to the trade Making sure all oh, those. I'm just putting a little olive. Sorry, my mistake, folks. That should be whip finished into that position, not wound into that position. So I'll take my whip finishing tool and I will whip in that little bit of olive dubbing there, as you see. Okay? Perfect. Good tighten up, make sure everything is there. 
Horse fish in Limerick, eh? that's a good man, Mikey. I was down in Limerick during the week, Mikey. Myself and Deirdre and the kids went down for uh, Deirdre's birthday. We spent a night down there in Limerick City. Great old time. Uh, great old time. So what I'm going to do with that now is just give that a brush back. Getting that little bit of dubbing. There's one bit of a strand of Kevlar sticking up in the way. Um, great time down in Limerick there. Just brush that little bit of dubbing back. It helps to just keep that partridge in position exactly where I want it. It's a real emerger pattern. Um, and I'll just shorten up the white CDC now a little bit. Just use my finger and thumb just to pluck it to the desired length. Make sure it's on top. Lovely looking little fly. And that is an absolute treat of a little pattern um, for that <coughs> style of fishing. Um, Really <clears throat> fantastic little pattern. What I'm going to do is just going to wet that up as well. Thanks, Graham. I'm just going to wet that up there now. So you get to see, like we did before, the effects of why we put on the partridge, the effects of why we use the CDC. It's important to have a good understanding of that. So once again, just going to tie it onto a bit of mono. It just makes life a little bit easier for me dipping it. Um, Also, I've seen somebody had actually asked a question, uh, thanks, Kieran, about using a, a, a second fly or a dropper. Yes, you can, absolutely. Depends on the time of year where I'm fishing. It does fish probably more effectively during the summer months um, as a single fly. That secondary fly sometimes can inflict on your contact to the point fly if that's what they're taking. Um, so, um, can inflict on it a little bit, so... so I do tend to stick to singular, as George was showing there in his video. Now we can see that. I'm just going to put that into the tweezers, and it'll give you a good visual of how that looks when it's wet. And there you go. Very natural little emerger nymph. Um, you can see that white CDC just cloaking back over the top. Like a wing case, your lovely olive and black ribbon underneath. A uh, little bit of flash there from your from your bead, just makes it very very natural looking. Uh, sometimes when I put the hand at the back, it kind of allows us to see a little bit more detail. Um, but you know, it has nice legs there. It has everything going for a really fishy looking little nymph. Uh, super effective fished upstream nymph. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's where it's supposed to be, Colm. Um, sitting sitting mid-water uh, floating down along the river just enough weight to get it down into position but not to drag it to the bottom and then the trout come and pick it up and uh, very very effective so there we have it folks there's three cracking patterns for you tonight um, try it and test it as always um, you know really really worth doing some upstream nymph next year uh, I know Euro nymph is, is highly productive and you know we all fall into that trap of you know yeah, keep nymph and nymph and nymph thanks Kevin Um it is more. It, how you doing, John? It's it's a <laughs> um, natural limitation or, or an impression. It's 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 a bit of both, really. Um, one for the box burner, absolutely. A uh, bit of both, John. It's it, you know it imitates an emerger. Um, it imitates an olive emerger, but that'll work any time throughout the, throughout the season. Um, depending on what you want to throw in, but it's, it's just a fly that will sit in that midriff. Again, you can coat that with powder. It creates a nice air bubbles around it and stuff like that, and really, really super effective for when fish are in that midriff and they're sitting, looking up, and your Euronympha techniques are not producing the fish you want it to be producing because you're fishing underneath them will then go to more upstream nymph and some patterns like that folks are really really productive just using that technique that george was demonstrating there for us um so there we have it folks that's the first night of euro nymph or of nymph november should i say uh next week we're going to be back with another nymph segment stay tuned if i pull everything together we will be doing a very interesting one next week uh one that i'm really looking forward to doing um, I won't give it away just yet I'll save it till next till midweek and I'll put up an advertisement on Facebook but uh, do make sure and check out pescarifly.com if you need any fly tying materials or just want any advice on any stuff check us out or give us a shout here <clears throat> or call down and see us uh, thanks for watching everyone hope everyone enjoys the rest of the weekend well done Ireland again fantastic result today um, thanks for everyone for tuning in thanks everyone for their massive support over the week the feedback from last week was fantastic we have a lot more um, technical lights lined up now for, for the winter months and uh, we hope you all I'll enjoy the show so enjoy the rest of your weekend folks 
and uh, thanks Liam and uh, I hope everyone is keeps well and I will see you all back here next Saturday night at 8.30pm good night folks have a good weekend